If you're new to the channel, we cut down a tree in my parents' backyard. This tree's been there since I was a child, so we're really excited to mill it, turn it into slabs of wood, and try to make our countertops out of it. We've spent the past couple weeks at our friend's woodworking shop. He's advised us on how to make the most out of the wood that we have, and we've just brought our countertops into the bus for the finishing touches. I feel like we're ruining it. <laughs> I know, I feel terrible. <laughs> I just can't stop staring at it because it's so pretty, it's so beautiful. I'm so happy right now, like I just want to be here with my countertop. <laughs> <laughs> Is that silly? I just love it so much. We're Mela and Don. We uprooted our lives and left Los Angeles. With the dream of converting an MCI D3 40 foot bus into a tiny home on wheels. We are sharing our progress. One bite at a time. <laughs> what? How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna do today is get everything out, unwrap it, and do a quick dry fit. It's just like Christmas again. <laughs> First thing we're doing is I'm making some marks so I can cut exactly where our conduit opening is. It's my patented method. Richard was kind enough to let us borrow his track saw, which is really nice so we can get some good straight cuts. The track saw is my favorite tool that we don't have. I think so many projects would have been so much easier with the track saw and I'm so glad Richard let us borrow this one. It looks amazing. It's great to finally see it in its spot. It's starting to come alive. I'm glad we are doing the finishing touches in the bus, just as we expected. You know, there's places where it just doesn't fit quite right because our bus is just not that square. We're going to get rid of some of the excess of leftover bark on our live edges. I'm using an old brush for a grill. What I like about it is that it still leaves a lot of the character. You can still see all the valleys made from the ash ball beetle getting underneath the bark. Alright, we got the uh, live edge glued in. It's probably gonna take 45 minutes to really start to set up. So we got the clamps, straps on it, and now we're gonna do the corner live edge. We're gonna do some tests with how we're gonna seal up the rotted wood. And Richard recommended we use a wood weld. We're using Rubia Monocoat for our stains, so we decided to buy Rubia Monocoat wood filler because apparently it will take the color of the stain. But we're gonna sand it down when it's dry and put our stain on it and see if it really does accept the color of the stain. So we purposely built uh, the edges to go over 
the sink because we've got this apron sink but we built quite a bit out here with the countertops so that we could make sure and cover the steel of the sink so the first thing we're going to do is mark those down and then cut them so we use the track saw and chopped off the side that goes right over the sink So these pre-made cabinets that we bought, their drawers and doors go right to the very, very top of the cabinets, which causes a little bit of a problem with uh, when we put our countertop on. In the cabinet that we made for our TV lift and fireplace, we put our top drawers down just a little bit so it's no problem opening them. But we've sanded off as much as we feel like we can sand off. It's making me uncomfortable. You gotta do something more. What are you doing? Oh, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> what did you tell me? <laughs> I feel like that's as good as it's gonna get, babe. The wood filler is dry. The next step for us first to put some of the stain on. Yeah, that's probably gonna look pretty good. I think so. It's gonna look very natural. It's dried a little bit lighter than when it was wet, but once we put the stain on, it darkened it up just enough that I think it's gonna work pretty well. Epoxy won't take stain, so what we'll do for deep holes is put quite a bit of epoxy in, let it harden up, put a little wood filler on top, and then stain that wood filler, which will be the area that's the surface of the countertop. It's a gray, gloomy, and drizzly day. So my main obstacle is to try not to get a bunch of mud tracked into the bus, like I accidentally did yesterday. In order to get the corner L shape cut to size to fit in its spot, we had to take off a little bit again at the bottom of the live edge trim work so that it could fit over the sink because our trim work is all just hanging just a tiny bit too low. And so we decided instead of just sanding it down, we were going to use a handsaw to slice a bit off. Well, <laughs> we used that handsaw in here yesterday, and we've been leaving all the tools we need in the bus, and it's gone. We spent, like, what do you think, done like half an hour looking for this little handsaw, and it doesn't make any sense for it to have left the bus since yesterday. I even looked in the videos <laughs> to see where I put it, and I could see I put it down on top of the wood I was using, and now it's gone. It's just gone. Like, half an hour of searching, and we... We searched inside, the tent, the house, the garage, turned the bus inside out, and it's gone to that magical place where like socks and Tupperware lids go. I just couldn't find it. My dad had a little handsaw that isn't as nice as my Japanese style one, so we ended up using it, and then Mela sanded it down so it's nice and smooth, and now our corner piece is fitting. edges cut. So 
so we can kind of see how it's going to look. You know, I just found that saw again, too. I've been looking for it for about a month. It's like wants to be lost. So the little countertop that goes behind our sink, we waited until we got in the bus to cut it down and figure out the sizing for it because we knew everything was going to be a little shifty once we got it in here. We've got some bottom bracing put in for it now. Glued the bracing down, screwed it down, clamped it down, and then let it dry. We're gonna put the biscuit holes in. And we got a dry fit, so we're going to put our epoxies in any place there's a rotten chunk of wood just to seal it up so it doesn't continue rotting. We got one more big rotten piece of wood to fill in with a little bit of epoxy right here. You know what that means? It's time for one o'clock. Champagne o'clock. Champagne o'clock. Yeah, remember we didn't have champagne for New Year's, so we could drink it tonight if you want. Yeah. We're sealing up the bottom side because the top side will obviously be the side that we put the stain on and seal. But we want to make sure both sides are sealed so it protects them from moisture because if it, any moisture gets underneath and the wood isn't sealed, then the wood could warp, apparently. Alright, we're gonna call it our night. It's time to go have champagne. <laughs> we have had a very mild winter so far. But that has finally changed today. Temps have plummeted and it looks like they're just gonna go down this week. <laughs> and we got our first little bit of snow. It's not a lot, but um, it's a sign that the real winter is coming. <sighs> but we got countertops to do. We need to make some decisions about where we're going to put our faucet, our soap dispenser, and our drinking water spout and cut out the holes. This is something that you only get to do once. So we gotta make some decisions now. All the instructions for installing the faucet are like, put it in the hole that's already there. <laughs> <laughs> where should I put that hole? Yeah. Uh, and our handsaw magically reappeared today. But what was even more exciting is we finally opened up our water filter from Aquava. Box inside the box inside the box. It's like a baby. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. It's like the baby version of our big mommy spout. <laughs> 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 it's so cute! <laughs> We're not going to be fully installing this water purifier today because we still have plumbing work to do but we just have to figure out the placement so we can get the hole for a little baby spell. From what we understand, having clean drinking water, safe drinking water, is one of the more difficult things you kind of have to manage. Now there's a $20 water filter. It's an inline filter, meaning that as you're getting water through a hose, it's filtering out sediment so you can put it into your tank. We'll also be using a house water filter, and this way it will clean the water as it gets into our plumbing before it hits our pressure tank. But for drinking water, there's only a couple real safe options we've found. 
We've been using a Berkey water filter for the past couple years and originally we bought it thinking this is what we were going to use in the bus. It works really well, it filters the water really well, but it is big and cumbersome and to be honest, the cleaning process is something that Don and I just hate dealing with. It's kind of a big mission. And there's no good way to know if you've overfilled your Berkey. And if you end up doing that, basically the water just all leaks out through the edges of it. We've accidentally flooded our kitchen twice in the two years. I've accidentally <laughs> flooded the kitchen twice. Which is why we decided to go with the Acuvo water purifying system. It takes up a lot less space. It has really easy maintenance. Because the Aquavo water purification system uses UV light, it filters out 99.999% of all bacteria, viruses, things that are so small they couldn't be filtered out with normal filters. Now, our household, we drink three gallons or more of water every day with coffee, drink water, water for the cats. And one thing that I do like about the Aquavo filters is the standard filter alone will last us over three years before it would need to be replaced. Now we'll show you the full installation of this water purification system in the future when we are ready to do the plumbing so we can make it work. You can save 10% off any Aquavo purchase using coupon code REHABITATE. We'll include our partner link in the description below. But for right now, all we have to do is get our hole for our little faucet. What do you think? Fantastic. Love it. Now we're finally ready to glue all three pieces of our countertop together. We put some wax paper down underneath that sink area so we don't get any glue onto the actual sink. late start to the day today so I didn't get too much done but I'm feeling pretty good about the fact that it's one whole countertop <laughs> we're so close to being done with them are you excited Don? well now we're back to what this whole project has been which is glue and then wait till tomorrow to work on it again we'll see that this morning it is cold down in the low 20s and our heat pump is only rated to go down to 20. We gotta get the diesel heater out. We haven't fired the diesel heater up since last winter. It's still got some diesel in it. Power came on. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's heating up real nice. So let's hook it up into our rigged up window. This isn't a permanent solution. This is our makeshift solution until we can figure out where to mount it in the bus. So now we get into wood fuller. So we're filling in any big cracks, especially in the places where we feel we'll be doing a lot of food prep. Some places where it's more in the office side, we feel like it's okay if they're little cracks. It just adds character. I think we can leave that. I feel like we fold that hole. Yeah. So like fold that, fold this, anything around the sink. Let's fill these epoxy places. Yep. It is a five to two measurement. So you just add the powder and then two parts water, mix it up and it's ready to go. Look at this. First thing you're cooking on the countertop. <laughs> Looks like a delicious chocolate dessert. <laughs> That's a better description than poop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting hungry. Mmm, <laughs> chocolate cake. Now you have me thinking about chocolate dessert. It's going really good. This method we got down of putting tape down of the hole so you don't get too much wood full of all over the place is working great. And my favorite tool for putting it in has been this little bamboo knife. It's 
a little to get in the little holes. The unserrated side is a good just little scraper to take away the excess. Now we wanted to leave a lot of imperfections, but uh, putting the wood filler and then sealing it is going to make it so that if we get water, it doesn't run down through the countertops into the cabinets. Today, finally going to stay in the kitchen countertops. We've got some big areas with wood filler that we're going to sand down, and then we've got just a couple uneven places for our live edge. Before we do our final sand with the 120, we're going to spray it down with water to raise the grain. We're using Rubio Monaco, we've mentioned it in a, a couple videos, and what they recommend is that you just use a pencil and very lightly write with a pencil over your entire piece of wood. When you go to sand it with a 120 grit paper, you'll be able to tell that you've sanded the entire thing. I feel like we're ruining it. I know! I feel terrible. <laughs> All right, messed it up. <laughs> Should I start vacuuming? Sure. Next, we're going to give it a clean with mineral spirits. It prepares the wood somehow. I don't remember why, but that's what they said, so that's what we're doing. All right, now we've got to open some windows to vent the mineral spirits and wait for it to dissipate and then we'll be ready to actually stain them. So we chose to go with Rubio Monaco because it has zero VOCs and it gives the wood a very natural look. You can use just the oil plus 2C or you can add this accelerator which makes the cure time faster. We'll put links below for the Rubio Monaco in the description. If you are interested in using it yourself, you can go purchase it there. And as always, we'll put these details of all the instructions of how we used it in our blog. We're going to mix three parts of the oil plus 2C and one part of the accelerator together and then we can put it on our countertop. After pouring on just a little bit, a little bit goes a long way. We used the spreader just to really kind of spread it out and then we came in afterwards with a sponge. The sponge was great to get in all the little nooks and crannies that you couldn't get it in with the spreader and just really make sure it was saturating all of the wood. You only want to work in sections at a time. So you want to spread it out, get it everywhere, and then you want to come over with a terry cloth and wipe away any excess. And then you'll move on to the next section. And you don't have to worry about those sections that you're doing overlapping. The way this oil works is it absorbs into the wood fibers and once it's absorbed into it, that's it. You can't put more on and make it darker. How do you feel about it? Wow! It's so cool! I love it! It's so beautiful! <laughs> I don't know if this is one of those things that the camera can do justice to just how nice 
this all looks. Hitting it with the stain made the final bit of difference. And just like when we did the stain test, how we saw all these different colors in the wood, blacks, warm browns, warm colors, even some greens, the same thing happened all throughout. I just can't stop staring at it because it's so pretty, it's so beautiful. I just, um, I'm so happy right now. Like I just want to be here with my count. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to say, ah, oh, it's done, but it's not technically done yet. We have to wait for this to dry and then we will secure the countertop down into the cabinets. And we still have the door for our TV lift uh, to stain. So we've got the backsplash and the door to still stain. <laughs> Is that silly? I just love it so much. I think I have a new favorite room done. <laughs> well, there's only three rooms in the bus, so well, hopefully if we're lucky, all three will be your favorite by the time we're done. <laughs> because the Aquava Waterford Purification... Because the Aquava Waterford... Water Purification. And Mel and I drink a lot of water, about three to three and a half gallons a day, which means with the aquava of aquava, <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying this. Now we'll show you our full insulation. Insulation? <laughs> it's my turn. <laughs> Might as well turn around and smile. This is gonna be the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs>